Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for another painting tutorial. As you can see, I've got a really big canvas here. I just came into my studio today and I felt like doing some big art. So I've got a large 24 by 36 um, canvas and I just primed it. Uh, three coats I used, I think it took, yeah, three coats of dark gray. And you can do this on a black canvas if you want, any size canvas you want. I really like a dark charcoal gray to work with. Um, colors um, pop off uh, charcoal canvas beautifully. Um, so be sure to paint this on any size canvas you want if you don't have a large canvas like this. Um, and let's just go over the colors that I've chosen today for this painting. I've got primary yellow, sap green, dioxazine purple, some neon red, light blue violet, and some titanium white. So these are the only colors I'm gonna be using today and I'm gonna make other colors by mixing a few of these around. So I hope you guys enjoy watching um, how this painting comes together. I'll be talking quietly during the process, explaining my um, steps as I go along, but I want you guys to really feel relaxed watching this. And if it inspires you in any way, leave a comment and let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. And of course, you're welcome to paint along with me. I love seeing your versions of my paintings, by the way. So feel free to tag me um, on your social media. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come in with the sky across the top here. We're going to have um, a horizon line really high up, like our perspective line is going to be what way up here. And I love dramatic uh, perspectives like this where there's either way more sky and a little bit of foreground and land below um, or in this case the opposite so just a little bit of sky kind of makes you feel like you're sitting down low and you're kind of just looking um, up towards this forest back here with some soft peachy glowing uh, sunlight in the back so this could be a sunrise or the beginning of a sunset I'm going to take one of my largest brushes. I've got a number 50 filbert brush. It's a little bit wet and I'm going to be using a lot of paint for this canvas today because it's a large canvas. So that's why I've got a ton of paint here on my palette. It's actually pretty heavy. Um, and I'm just going to start with some white. So I'll just take a whole bunch of white like this, big scoop, and I'm going to just paint all across the top. Now, don't be surprised if you see me switch hands. When I'm working on big canvases like this, my arm and my wrist get sore, so I can, um, fortunately, I can switch over to my right hand, but I'm um, primarily left-handed, but I can use my right hand when I really need to. I'm just more comfortable using my left. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush and bring this down a little bit lower and I'm just going to start being a little wiggly with it because, you know, we're going to have some um, trees in the background and they're going to be different heights. So you can already kind of just start to flow with your brush like this to get a feel for what those are going to look like. So because I'm applying, I want this to be really bright and I'm adding this on a dark canvas, I'm being really generous with the amount of paint I'm using and it might take a few layers because the dark underpainting will show through when it's dry if I'm not. So I'm gonna add that there and then what I'm gonna do is just dry it off and start coming in with my yellow and red and create some beautiful golden sunlight. So I've dried most of it off and because the paint is really thick in some areas, it's gonna take longer to dry. So I'm just gonna go right in here and start adding some red, some yellow and some more white. So take <laughs> this messy, it just dropped on the floor. A little bit of each color and just start spreading it around Unless you want yours to be a little bit more saturated and that's fine too. It's whatever you prefer. And I'm just gonna 
tap a little bit in here where I know I'm going to have some trees coming down a little bit lower. Okay, then I'm going to rinse my brush out. The next brush I'm going to be using is one of my largest mop brushes here. Uh, I believe this is a number 40. I can't find any more of these. I bought this years ago from Michaels and they discontinued them. Why? I don't know. Kind of broke my heart because it's one of the best brushes I've ever um, purchased in my life. It was more on the expensive side. Um, but anyways, just use any large brush you have for stippling if you don't have a large mop brush. And what I'm going to do now is just start coming in with the back row, the, the forest in the back. And I want to take a little bit of purple, a little bit of my sap green, and I'm just going to start right over here. And it doesn't really show up until we just kind of tap it a little bit over that sky and let the paint from the sky work its way in to your brush. That way you're gonna to start to get some soft, moody tones. So go up a little bit and then back down, up a little higher in some areas. Keep going in here, off the right side, and just keep working our way over, up and down, little taps, adding a little bit more purple and green. Okay, switching over to my right hand. I mentioned before that sometimes I have to do this when I'm working on large paintings. Um, I get a I get a really sore arm. It's like quite the workout when you're continuously tapping or brushing back and forth. Okay, again, just going up there using some of that sky color and bringing it down, creating some lighter lavender tones and muddy green muddy from the purple mixing in and the peach up there and i'm going to go over to my long rigor brush this is a number two brush i'm going to get it wet and i'm just going to take some of that yellow red purple green a little bit of white in there Make sure you have a little drip there, a little bit of water in there as well. And I'm just going to pull up and down a little bit of tree trunks back here. Very gently. They don't have to be perfectly straight. Tree trunks are not perfect. There's lots of crooked, leaning trees, this way and that way. Like you're painting grass. So these are just a row of trees, remember. You're not going to see the base of them. We're just going to see some stipple, texture, color, and these lines. And that'll give the illusion of some tree trunks way back there. I'm gonna stay away from, I'm not gonna bother doing it right here or adding those tree trunks here because we're gonna have our big, big tree and there's gonna be a lot of dark um, coverage right here. So we don't need to bother doing that. Um, however, the next step is coming in with my large two and a half 
inch flat brush and I'm going to sweep right under here, right under the base, and we're going to bring in a beautiful golden field. So I'm going to take no water at all, just some yellow, white, little bit of red. That'll help it become more of a peach tone. You need to have a lot of white in your brush, okay? Otherwise, the black will just show through and it won't show up. So I'm going to go right underneath, pull across. Now, my purple and green is still a little bit wet right there. So that's why that's showing through. Or pick, I'm picking up a little bit of it and it's kind of blending out and working its way into this field. And I'm gonna be adding another layer over this. I don't want that purple there. It's kind of pretty, but that's not the lighting that I want. So I'll be drying this off and then I'll be coming in with a little bit more of the peach. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the neon red this time. Okay, so I dried it off. I'm gonna pick up some more red with my yellow and white. And I'm gonna go right over that. Now I'm also going to add another layer of some bushes that are lower down, um, closer to the ground. I'm going to be using another mop brush. It's dry. I only want to add paint to it. Otherwise, if you put it in the water, it'll ruin the shape of it. So I'm going to take a different color combination or use a different color combination, a little bit of yellow, white, and green. I want it to be more of an olive green color, so I'm gonna add more yellow and just the tiniest bit of purple, and that will tone that color for me. So yellow, purple, green, and white. Okay, don't oversaturate your brush. And we'll just start coming and adding little touches like this. You can add a little bit more white to some areas. Even a hint of that peach in there would be really pretty for kind of a sunny highlight on some of these. Now again, we're gonna have our big tree in here. Let's just get right in here and add some light. You can go over part of the tops of those trees as well. You just want to have a combination of both. I'm going to quickly go back over to my rigger brush and add a few more little tree trunks. I like the way that looks, just having a few of those visible back there. The trick is to not use a lot of pressure. If you feel like the only way you can apply paint on the canvas is by pushing really hard with your liner brush, it probably means you either don't have enough water in your brush or paint, but most of the time, nine times out of 10, 
it's not having enough water because the water really helps um, your paint flow seamlessly and effortlessly out of these liner brushes. I'm gonna use a number 20 flat brush and just smooth out the bottom here. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, make that peachy color again. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is take my number three round brush and I'm gonna add a tree that comes right from here. And I'm going to mix purple and red and yellow. A little bit more of the purple to make a darker shade of brown. Okay, so I'm gonna add it right here. Right about there, we're gonna cover the base with some bushes. Twist and roll just to add some branches there. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to another mop brush. This is uh, my number 20 mop brush for my series of paint brushes. Anything you see with a lavender handle and um, these gold um, parts, ferrules, uh, are from my brush line. And I'll have a link below where you can click on them and uh, purchase a set. So I'm gonna take a little bit of purple and a little bit of green and I'm just gonna start tapping right up the top, a little bit here and there. You don't want it to be too, too solid. Okay, then I'm going to add some at the base. So I'll take another little bit of green and purple. have some little bushes here. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush out. I'll go back over to my rigger brush. Take some purple and some red and add a little bit more warmth to this tree trunk. I make it slightly thicker down here. I love the play on color, the purpley red with all the green we've got.
and I'm going to come in on the left side with more of the purple to create more of a shadow. Okay, then I'm going to go back over to the brown that I made. Add a little bit of white in there. And just add a few little branches down here. And I'm going to add a little bit of width to this tree trunk because I just noticed that it's thicker, it's wider here than the base. So always make sure the base of your tree trunk is the widest. come in with a few little baby branches down here and some shadows. This will help the contrast and the highlights will pop out more if I have a little bit of a darker color down here. Okay, I'm going to be using another mop brush, Dry. And I'm going to make a golden yellow here, a little white, a little bit of yellow, and I'm just going to tap sparingly for some highlights on that bush. And then I could add a little bit in between here. And just add a little bit more of that golden yellow okay then i'm going to take more of this golden yellow here and i'm going to start just wiggling and blending along just the base of where this field meets the black Once it dries, it'll be more of an olive green color. Okay, so the next color I'm going to take, purple and green. I've still got the yellow in my brush, and I'm going to come from the bottom, turn it over, just gently pulling and flicking a few little taps. Now I'm going to try adding a little bit of water to my brush to see if I can get more of a soft feathery a little bit of water helps out. It's just for some grass that's going to be in shadow here in the front and closer to us. And I'm just going to scumble the rest. Kind of looks like an army green, brownish color. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is come in with our big tree here. There's a few trees. I'm going to start with the biggest one. And I'm going to be using my number 14 filbert brush. I'm going to take purple. A little bit of green in there is fine too. We just want to make a really dark color. Okay, and I'm going to start from here. And I'm going to make it 
uh, how about that wide? Now I think the white from on my sky is still wet. So I'm probably, yeah, I'm picking up a little bit of that. That's fine. I'll dry it off and I'll go over it. It actually might look kind of pretty. It's already creating a little bit of, look at that, a pretty little highlight. I want to have a little bend in it like that and then have it come down right in here. And then have a thick branch coming up just there. And this is this isn't how long the tree is or tall the tree is but I need to have it darker here at the base in order for the flowers and the weeds to really show up okay I'm gonna make it a little bumpier and thicker You know, just like a whole bunch of leaves and or two. Okay, so my number three round brush. Right up to the top of the canvas. And then there's going to be a few lower laying branches, like the tree is huge, right? From the perspective, we can't see that from where we're viewing it from. But there's some branches that come down and overhang. over to my 14 filbert brush again and I'm going to add another big tree right here okay so green and purple and let's just add the other one right here and we'll have a little bit of a lean to it A few big branches. And then I'm going to add one right here that's not as wide. I want to set these back a little bit further.
we've got three main trees and a whole lot of paint left in my brush. So let's try to get some of that off there. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'm going to go back over to my number two rigger brush. And I'm going to just kind of water down some purple and add a few little squiggly branches. I want you guys to just get really free and loose with your brush strokes when painting branches like don't try too hard to make them perfect. Branches are really messy and wiggly looking. So if you're a little bit nervous, just go with that because that'll give you more natural looking branches. Okay, now I'm going to take with that purple some yellow and some red, a little bit of green in there. Some water. And I'm just going to pull and flick up some All grass and weeds and then just add these little dabs here and there. start adding a little bit in here. Remember how we did our the tree trunks in the distance? It's exact same technique. I'm going to use a little bit of yellow white and green definitely need a little bit of water to really help that flow out of your brush okay the next thing we're going to do is take a small filbert brush. You can use a small round brush, small filbert, or even a flat for this. I'm going to paint um, an old charming country fence back here, and I'm going to be using some purple and red, nice dark brown color. And I think I'll just start over here. I'm going to add one right here. Some fence posts. Might need a little bit more purple in there to make it stand out and show up a little bit better. That'll also help everything back there look a little softer in tone. Maybe we've got a little opening right here, so I won't block that. I'll just make these ones a little bit taller.
and then I'm going to run two boards through this way. That we've got part of the fence. And we can even just add the boards first if you want. We'll add two posts like that and then we'll just continue along over here remember it's not about creating perfectly straight lines when you want to add character to a painting go with some lopsided crooked more free-flowing lines Okay, then we'll add one, two, I'm going to add a little bit of red and green in there. I'm going to be adding some dark, dark green down in here. And I'm going to use another big dry mop brush. I'm going to use some sap green, a little bit of purple. And I'm going to put this at the base of the tree and then have a little bit going up and at the top. And then I'm just going to start brushing up and down. I want to get the base of these fence posts. I want to get that tucked back there. And then add a little bit of yellow, green, and white. A little bit of that purple to tone it, make it more of an olive color. We'll just start making some soft, kind of blurry looking grass that'll be in the background. A little tap and then a little pull. And another layer of some leaves in here. And then I'm going to add a nice grass landing right in here.
a little bit of yellow green. Mix a little bit of purple in there. Super creating some tall grass and bushes. This is the shadow part of those. some from the corner. I'm going to slowly build up some layers in here. Again, coming in with purple. And a little bit of blue violet in there. And I'm just going to gently start to fan some of that in there. And then tap lightly. Some pretty flowers. And I'll add some over here too. It's nice to have a little bit of that blurry, soft blended look in with a few little taps like this for a bit of texture. Take a little bit of purple in with my blue. And I'll add a little bit in here as well. Different shades of purple and lavender. And then Little gentle taps like this. Let's take a little bit of blue, green, and purple. And add a few little bushes that come kind of down here. And a few in here as well. A little bit of yellow and green.
I just have a few pieces of tall grass. And kind of just roll with your brush like that, and then I'll give you that look. It's pretty easy. I'm going to rinse that brush out. And then I'll just go back over to my liner brush. And I'll take some yellow and green, a little bit of purple, a little bit of white in there. I had a few stems. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of red, some yellow, and some white. A few little dabs in here. Some light. Just a few little touches and then thin little lines for some little stems. I'm going to take some more blue. There's a little bit of peach in my brush too. I'll let that kind of work out. Okay, and then a little bit of purple with my blue. I don't know what these are. Maybe they're little abstract bluebells, little flowers.
few lines for some stamps. Take a little scoop of yellow and green. Got a few little dabs here. I'm just going to make a few more blurry lines here, just pulling off what I just added. Add a little bit more blue, touch of purple. I'll show you guys a nice technique using a little fan brush or some wispy looking grass. You just get your brush wet and mm, let's see, take a little bit of a little bit of blue. So you want to make sure you have water. I'm going to take that peach color, muddy it up with some green and yellow. And just curve over using the side of your brush, like a little pressure. A little bit of green and purple on my brush. Just to add some more leaves and vines growing up top there. And with a clean brush, I'm going to take the rest of my red, a little bit of purple, and I'm just going to glide that up, add a little bit of red to warmth to these trees. And brush a little over here as well. I think I'll paint a few little daisies in here. So I'm just going to take some white and some blue. This will be more in shadow. And I'll just start with pulling 
push, pull in. Really easy when using a filbert brush. Okay, then you can just take a little bit of red and yellow. And tap for the center. So just dry this off and you can see it dried a little bit darker there. So you just go back, add those colors again with a little bit of white. Tap lightly for some texture. Okay, now I'll paint some more and I'm going to layer over. So I'll have oh, one coming from here. Back over to yellow and red. I'm adding a little bit of blue to them because I want to have a bit of a shadow. Then we'll add our little centers again. Take a little bit of my green and blue. And add some leaves in here, just pushing and then twisting and letting off. going to blend in with what's going up this tree so it's going to be darker and darker and darker as it gets up here. Add a little tap and dab of white and yellow over top of this. I'm going to tap it on there for the texture. Okay. 
Okay, and I'll paint a few more little daisies. I'm going to go back over to my fan brush here to get a little bit of white and yellow again, a little bit of water, and add a little highlight on some of these. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of blue, a little bit of that red, and add a few more little flowers here. A little bit of blue and purple. I'm going to mix up a little bit of white and I'm just going to use just to make a softer shade here. Back over to my rigor brush. And just add a few stems in here for these daisies, a bit of yellow and green.
is I'll pull out a few more little blades of grass using yellow, green, and purple. A little bit of water. Don't be afraid to go over top of your daisies. Okay, I'm going to use my filbert brush again, go into my light purpley blue color, add a few more flowers, I want these ones to be darker so they're a little bit more in shadow. have one coming down here right off the corner Okay, we'll just add the centers. Okay, well, this painting's all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. Thanks for sticking around and watching the whole video. Um, don't forget to tag me in your versions that you post online. I'd love to see them. And by the way, you guys are doing amazing. So keep up the great work. Thank you for all your support here and on Patreon. And have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys soon in another video. Take care, everybody. Bye.